Мы все знаем, что вы ну, фактически универсальный актер. Можете как все кровь угодно, хоть для другой для молодости. А, скажите, вы в первый раз, скажем, человек, который сидит за, ну, за решеткой в тюрьме. А, кого это было сниматься в тюрьме? Кто потом медитацию, которую устроили, и по золотости. Ну и также вопрос еще сами был, кого это играть, кого это собирать технически столько людей на площадке, которые вас хроновские, знаменитые, звезды и так далее. Спасибо.
Uh, the biggest challenge in writing a script, uh, you know, there were two. One is time travel. The, the, the trap of time travel um, is that you have a lot of gaps, you have paradoxes. Um, it's a very tricky thing to keep straight in most time travel movies. Someone comes from the future to the past and they stay in the past for the whole movie. And then at the very end you see the future and the effect of the film. In this movie we're in a cutting between past and future. So um, the sort of butterfly effect of the things in the 1970s um, on the characters in the future was a tricky um, idea to sort of wrap my head around and then help the audience wrap my head around. Um, but you know, there's something you said that was, um, it's not, a, there's no improvisation. And the truth is on, on, on these last few movies, there is a bit of improvisation. Um, there is uh, a fair amount of discovery on the day, uh, working with the actors. I mean, these are amazing actors. Um, they have, you know, more of a sense of who the characters are than, than I do as the writer, because they've now lived with these characters for a couple of movies. And they're inside them in a way that, as much as I sort of get my head inside them, I'm never wearing the costume, I'm never actually standing there as the character. So, um, you know, there's a lot of trust and a lot of partnership um, between me as the writer and, and the actors at crafting um, the film. So there is, as much as it feels like a very constructed or written movie, um, there is still space for discovery and improvisation on the day. I have to say, you know, full, full you know, credit to, to Simon, um, both as a sort of writer and producer on these films. Uh, it, it, there, it, there's a great openness that he has and, and he's always, you know, um, checking in with the actors and seeing what they think about certain ideas and, um, and just really kind of probing. And, uh, you know, on the flight over here we were discussing the next one. Can't tell you anything, of course, but, uh, uh, you know, so there's, there's always that, you know, interconnection, which is a, which is a rare thing. Uh, on films this size, where you really have that collaborative in input, and I have to say, with Brian as well and Matthew in first class, there was a great deal of that where we were allowed to collaborate and we were allowed to try things out. So that's um, that's very appealing to me, and I know all the other actors involved. Well, so Uh, у меня два вопроса. Вопрос первый. Не первый раз во франшизе Люди X фигурируют Москва и Россия. Uh, планируете ли вы это? Почему это происходит? И будет ли это дальше? И вопрос к Майклу непосредственно. Я так поняла, что uh, там играет ваш сын Ртуть в этом фильме. Uh, если это да, расскажите об этом подробнее. Спасибо. Um, uh, sure. Um, uh, you know, uh, quite a bit of actually um, the original X Men comics uh, take place in international locations, and Moscow's in some of them. The Colossus character, um, uh, Pietro Rasputin, is a, is a Russian character. Um, and, you know, it's an international cast, so for us, we want to set it in, in you know, places around the world. and. and Moscow has uh, always been an inspiring place for me. In terms of the next movie, uh, it takes place in the 80s, and um, the 80s is an interesting time um, in Russian history and Russian-American history. So it may be something that we explore. And I'm very proud of my son. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, that's my favorite uh, scene in the movie, for sure, the scene in the kitchen. Um, hopefully we'll be seeing some more of him. Actually, I wanted him to be there with me on the White House lawn at the end of the film. But, um, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll see him again in the next film. I, I loved what Evan did with the character. And I loved the, uh, you know, Brian's vision in that kitchen scene. So, yeah. Hello. Uh, вопрос uh, для начала к Саймону. Uh, вы являетесь, ну, можно сказать, таким вот uh, отцом людей X. Uh, про Черноупас существует такая шутка. Uh, давайте скорее смотреть uh, Звездные войны, пока Лукас ничего не поменял. Я смотрела все части людей X, и я немножко запуталась. Вот, под конец, mm -hmm. что откуда и uh, вопрос к Майклу. 
Верите ли вы, что такое будущее, показанное в фильме у вас, это будущее, оно действительно возможно? И мы сейчас туда движемся, если даже за обедом никто не слушает металлик.
being different or whatever it may be, uh, society has decided to sort of keep them uh, on the out outskirts. I think that can be a very common thing for kids, especially, you know, when you leave primary school and you go into secondary school, that's a, that can be a difficult time. And, you know, kids want, you know, that are, feel like they're different or um, not so part of the sort of mass, ordinary, uh, not ordinary, but just, just for whatever reason they feel like they stand out or they're different and maybe they get persecuted for that. Uh, or feel that they get persecuted. Uh, and so I think in, in comic book films like this, although we're dealing with mutants, these are really very human concepts. Uh, and so hopefully through these superheroes they can think, well, you know, these guys are different too, and, uh, and, um, and they're pretty cool. And so, you know, find some sort of strength in that, hopefully. Um, and in terms of Magneto, what was the question in terms of Magneto? Was he... What ideas he will bring to the people? Oh, okay. yeah. What uh, Russian character? Ah, and the second question, you mean? Yeah. The yeah. second question is about a uh, dream role, and uh, if it's possible, have you read the Russian literature? Maybe it's a character from Russian literature. Yeah, you mean Raskolnikov. <laughs> <laughs> yes, him. Perfect. <laughs> Um, so steeped in great stories and playwrights. I mean, I did do um, a small part in Three Sisters. It was for my first uh, uh, job out of drama school. Um, so yeah, maybe um, do a little revisit there. Uh, there's so much here. I know that when I started off acting, you know, Stanislavski was really kind of uh, a huge influence on me. That was very much uh, an obsession for me at, at the beginning. So I feel like it's been part of my uh, training from from the beginning. Ребята, три вопроса. You want to do it? Michael, the company will meet you, Julio Natalia. I have a question for your work. You said that when you play a role, the actor should обозначать для себя какие-то границы, лимиты, за которые он не может перейти в своих действиях, исполняя роль. Есть ли для вас какие-то такие границы, на что вы ни за что не пойдете, исполняя свою роль? И еще, вот прежде всего, я переступаю через профессиональные рамки, хочу сказать, что я ваш восторженный зритель, даже можно сказать, огромный фанат, поэтому для меня все ваши роли, на мой взгляд, отыграны прекрасно, начиная с рекламного ролика и заканчивая вот этой прекрасной премьерой. Но есть ли у вас лично отыгранная вами роль, любимая, так сказать, ваша работа, любимая ваша роль, где вы довольны с собой на 100%? I was the I was pretty pleased with what happened, what we achieved well, in 12 years of I thought that was um, pretty powerful. I walked away from that, you know, and very proud, and um, not just of the film, but you know, my my participation. Uh, but there's plenty of parts that I've turned down because I just know, like I did just recently, because I, you know, I can think of five or six other actors that would just do a better job than I would. Um, and that's just, you know, down to type, personality types. And um, hunger would be my favorite, just because it had so many implications for me. It was an opportunity for me to, uh, <clears throat> to play a lead role, which is difficult if you haven't managed to get into a certain level. You know, there's a list of actors that people would want to hire, and then there's another list, and then there's another list, and then there's... I was down somewhere beyond those lists, so to get an opportunity to, um, to work as a, you know, in a lead role capacity, and, and on such a film, and such a history, that was, that was pretty, pretty special. Yeah, that's what I was saying, you know, it's just that other actors would do a better job at certain parts, so that's, that's what I meant. Hello, 
Michael. Hello, Simon. Um, yeah, what's up, Michael? Um, я большой фанат комиксов и um, магниты профессора Ксавье, мои любимые персонажи. И у меня такой вопрос. Uh, какая у вас была любимая сцена с Джеймсом Макэвэ uh, в обоих фильмах? И в Люди Х первый класс, и в Люди Х не минуты будущего. I didn't have a scene with uh, Ian McKellen. I'll be at the next, the McAvoy. Oh, James? Yeah. Oh, God, that guy. Um, <laughs> um, well, mainly, you know, I'm just trying to sort of put him off in scenes or upstage him <laughs> or uh, make him look bad. Um, so, James, uh, that was the one thing about this. Um, <coughs> This film that both of us were, were a bit um, bummed. I mean, it, you know, I think you know Simon did such an amazing job with this structure, and let me really sort of reiterate how difficult it is to keep a clarity uh, in the story when you've got such an ensemble of uh, characters and actors, and you're you're moving from the future timeline to a past timeline, and they're interwoven, and they're working parallel. It was, a, I mean, quite a feat. It's, did an amazing job, and then Brian did, did a great job realizing it from what uh, Simon had penned. So, uh, really, sort of, uh, kudos there, man. Um, but yeah, James and I were a bit bummed that we didn't have more scenes together. Uh, but the ones that we had, I, you know, each of them was great. It's just, um, it's just a joy working with James. You know, we hit, a, hit it off pretty quickly on the first class. Um, He's a very generous actor, he's, pretty, he's very laid back and uh, very smart uh, and also just very free-flowing so we don't have to talk too much about what either of us wants to do or what we want to get really. We just sort of uh, uh, trust one another and, and, um, and, and sort of respond in the scene to one another, hopefully. Здравствуйте, Майкл, Алексей Александр, Глобус, Снимат.ру. Спасибо вам за прекрасную актерскую работу, прекрасный фильм. Вопрос у меня сначала к Майклу, потом к Сэмину. К Майклу, значит, вопрос. Вы являетесь как бы неофициальным флагманом перезапуска Люди Икс, а Хью Джекман является как бы неофициальным флагманом того фильма, этой франшизы. Каково вам работалось с Хью Джекманом в одном кадре в этом фильме? Что с вами интересно было во время вашего сотрудничества? Второй вопрос к Саймону. Мы знаем, что... В финале, сразу после всех титров, показывают апок... злодей Апокалипсиса. Как вы собираетесь развивать его дальше в фильме? Дальше фильма? Working with huge Jackman. Uh, it was, you know, that was a real treat. Uh, we had that scene very briefly in first class. And so I, I got to meet Hugh for the first time then, and he's just a wonderfully generous uh, man and actor. He's a great leader on set, and he's a great um, he's a great rallier of the troops. He's definitely a team player. Every week on a Friday, he would arrive with these scratch cards for everyone. And I don't know how many, how many people do we have in that group? Six hundred? Yeah, yeah, six hundred people. So that's a lot of scratch cards. Um, and he's just, yeah, he's just a, a, a really strong leader because he leads by example and I never ever, you know, see you get angry or lose patience. That scene, for example, where he goes into, um, into the river, uh, you know, that was, he spent all day in that uh, water tank and just, you know, without a heat. He's a, he's a pretty extraordinary person. I mean, if you count first class four movies with you, but not counting first class three movies with him, and I've never seen a piece on any set, three movies deep, I mean, he is um, pretty false. Um, uh, the, the tag at the end of the movie is a tag for the next film, uh, which will be Apocalypse, based on Age of Apocalypse, the, the, the comic run. Um, and I think what's exciting about it is it has huge, um, Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. Uh, it, it has really big stakes, and I think the bigger the sort of external stakes, 
the more pressure it puts on the characters, um, which is a good recipe for drama. Um, so I think it's, this is a first and foremost a character-driven franchise as it was comic book. Um, so the more pressure that I can put on the characters, um, the, the sort of the more intense the drama can get. And that's what's exciting about the next movie. Давайте последний вопрос, пожалуйста. Здравствуйте, меня зовут Настя. У меня вопрос к Майклу Фасбендеру. Сейчас Марвел в последнее время берет курс на телевидение. То есть вот успех агентов счета, недавно заказанный агент Картер. Если бы, например, Марвел решились бы сделать сериал про людей из. Интересно было бы вам, ну, так сказать, принять участие в этом проекте? Может быть, сыграть главную роль? Спасибо. I would only consider it if, if I could play the main role. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know. Um, yes, you know, I'm, uh, I've had so much fun with this and working with this group of people. If, if, the, if the people were the same, for sure. Uh, but, you know, I always... It's always, you know, down to, to how the script is and, and, and who's working on it. You know, if it wasn't in the hands of these guys, then uh, perhaps not. But if it was, you know, if it was still under the same one of people, uh, for sure. Thank you very much, Simon Kinberg and Michael Fassbender.